Hello everyone, thanks for joining me here in our boutique. I know it's been a couple weeks since we've been on. We actually completely switched locations and are now at least mostly settled in here. I'm still moving some things around within the shop, but we are happy to have you here and watching today. So I wanted to talk a little bit about pattern mixing. So pattern mixing is the thing that's always been a big trend within the LuLaRoe world, but this year we've seen it majorly on the runway for summer. And you can thank the street style folks for that because if you ever follow street style, Instagram, um, the fashion blogs, all of that, you'll see that pattern mixing has been a huge thing in street style for several years now. So I'm going to cover five rules of pattern mixing with you that will help you to feel confident when you are going out and pattern mixing. So I'm going to go over all five to begin with because they kind of get intermixed in the outfits and I want to make sure that you have an idea of where I'm coming from instead of being like, whoa, where did Elena come from with that? So the first one, color is super Cream. So you want to make sure that your colors go together and having one match at least at least one within your outfit is going to do a huge amount to help that pattern look like it's supposed to go with the pattern that you've paired with it. The second one is that you have pattern neutrals. It actually kind of ties in with our third one. So pattern neutrals are patterns that mix well with other prints that maybe don't fall into that category. And I will talk about those some more, but the four that I have down for our list that are generally accepted as pattern neutrals are stripes, polka dots, animal prints, and plaids. On that same tone, our third one is that texture is a different thing than patterns. So texture, I'm talking about your laces, I'm talking about your crocheteds, I'm talking about your things that they have a pattern to their design but they are not printed. Those, unless you have a lot of colors going on in it, especially if they're a single color, I should say, they are going to act as a pattern neutral as well. So they pair up with those stripes, polka dots, plaids, and animal prints. Now our fourth one to keep in mind is varying your size. Now if you are super confident in your pattern mixing, it's that whole thing like, I don't know if you've ever heard of the business book, First Break All the Rules. That's kind of true in pattern mixing as well. So once you're really comfortable with it, you can break the varying size rule. I've seen some examples from the runway that don't fit that, but they make it work. However, the people that put those together are super confident in what they're doing. So if you are not feeling confident, this is a great way to make sure that your things work out uh, in terms of mixing. And then the fifth one, so the first and the fifth are the most important. You want to make sure your colors work together and confidence, confidence, confidence. So when you are pattern mixing, you want to make sure that you are confident in what you are wearing when you leave because if you feel insecure in what you've put together, that's going to show when you're walking. If you're walking around slumped and you're not really feeling what you've got on, then it doesn't matter how well you followed the first four rules, it's not going to really work. So if you're not totally comfortable, start out in what I call dipping the toe into pattern mixing and become more com comfortable in it. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to pull some, I have some outfits pulled, I should say, that will show you some of the things that I'm talking about, including the one I have on. So I realized that I was not pattern mixing today when I came in. And so I have pulled an outfit for you guys that is an example of pattern mixing. So I'll start with what I have on my body. So I am wearing a striped sheath dress known as the Julia and it's done in corals, grays, and turquoise. I chose this to go with this particular wrap skirt because even though this is a navy and this is a gray, both are neutral colors so color plays a huge role in this, this skirt has that coral color from the stripe and it has the turquoise from the upper stripe. So I'm able to pair these two together because the colors blend and let me I can stand up on a stool for a moment I'm rather short so so the colors blend and this is a pattern neutral so because it's a stripe and it's got a slightly different size it's a wider stripe my patterns a little smaller of a pattern it works together so going on to some that are not on my body well I suppose first of all or second of all I should say I could show you what Lena's wearing. So Lena is still dressed for the 4th of July. I haven't changed her yet, but I love this outfit. So we have a smaller 
red, white, and blue print on her skirt. It's got rockets and all sorts of fun things on there. And then we have a larger, more solid print in the same colors on the top. So because of the larger print, smaller print, red all the way through, super cute together. Then I have, so I was talking about how animal prints are considered neutral prints. So this is a pair of leggings done in a leopard print. It's a warm brown combination, which makes it in the same color palette as our shirt that has a larger print that's feathers on it. So they work together. Going into a geometric, this is a geometric print tunic shirt. I've got a floral maxi. You can see that the color palettes intermix with this, which means you can pair these two together. And something that I didn't have in my notes, but that I talk about a lot when I do lives, is that when you have a smaller print like this, it plays as a solid. So from a distance, you are not able to see all of the details that are up close. The same is true of that pair of leggings that I just showed. It is not true of our next outfit, but this also works together. So you have actually two of our pattern neutral prints. You've got leopard, you've got polka dots. Now they are also sharing that they both have neutral secondary colors. So we have navy and we have white, and they share this gold tone between them. So cute. I may have to do a bomb shot with that, a buy off my body shot, because I kind of love that outfit, even though my hair is purple right now. Now with the plaids, here we have a simple plaid. So I say simple plaid because it's only three colors. This is black, white, and red. I have a black and white dolman style shirt that goes over this swing dress. So cute. So our colors go together. You have a print print. I know that probably sounds funny, but it's like an imagery print as opposed to a plaid. So the plaid acts as a neutral. Adorable together. I love that outfit. It's another one of my favorites. I kind of pulled a bunch of my favorites to show you guys. Speaking of, this is actually my absolute favorite outfit right now. So we have a striped v-neck shirt and then a pair of leggings with these super cute Boston Terriers. They've got the pink glasses on. The pink is the only real pop of non-neutral color in here. So you have your bold black and white. You've got your imagery print that's large enough that it's not lost, but it's not as big as the stripe is here. And it's awesome together. If you want a slightly smaller, we'll see what a slightly smaller image looks with a busier stripe. So this is a smaller stripe on here. So it's a little bit more visually stimulating in some ways. They're, they're stimulating in different ways um, between the last one and this one. But it's got a smaller print that's more blended together. But the colors, again, color is supreme. It is one of the most important things from color and confidence. Another one is this here is a plaid. It's a gingham style plaid done in gold tones. Very cute. You could layer this tank dress underneath this tunic length shirt, throw a belt on it. The golds go together. Large floral plus a plaid. Amazing. Amazing. And then I have two other ones I want to show you. So the first one is sometimes you can get these pattern mixes all in one piece. So this is one of our swing dresses. It's got a boat print on the body, stripe on the sleeve. You've got your pattern mix built in and it's all staying in the same cohesive color family. So the last one is my one example that I pulled of texture. So this is a kind of faux reptile print almost bottom. You can feel it more than you can see it. It's iridescent. It is in the same iridescent color family though as this dolman style shirt, which has flowers and patterns. It's actually a pattern mix in and of itself. Pairs amazingly with this pencil skirt. So just to review, our five things to keep in mind with pattern mixing. Color is supreme. Color is the most important thing to keep in mind when you're pattern mixing. The second one, stripes, polka dots, animal prints, and plaids act as pattern neutrals. We know what color neutrals are. These are pattern neutrals. Third, another neutral in your pattern mixing is a solid texture. So if you have multiple colors in your texture, it does change it up a little. It just depends on how many there are. Fourth, you have 
vary your size. So if you have a bold floral, put a smaller print with it or one of those pattern neutrals. And fifth, confidence is key. So if you keep those five things in mind when you dip your toe into pattern mixing, then that will help you to find outfits that you love and are confident in as you go out into the world. Now, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them below. I'll also be doing a blog post about this that'll be at lularotillysboutique.com. So feel free to drop in on there too if you prefer to see visuals instead of just listening. And we hope you are having a fabulous day and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much, guys.